This month I'm going to be presenting a paper at the International Mesothelioma Interest Group Conference in Ottawa, Canada. It's going to be a follow-up on papers we've presented in past years. The first one we did in uh, 2012 is uh, up here on the board and this was a poster about uh, developments of genetic testing in medicine and the implications for the legal system. Uh, we talked to the physicians at the IMIG meeting about the et ethical issues involved in doing genetic testing and the potential for using them uh, by asbestos companies uh, in defense of asbestos cases. Uh, those companies, of course, would like to blame diseases on anything they could other than their own dangerous products. And this became particularly important in cases of mesothelioma where scientists discovered that there was a genetic mutation, a change in our DNA that affected some people uh, that uh, may make them more susceptible to different kinds of cancers. Of course, just being susceptible to cancer from an asbestos exposure wouldn't be much of a defense. So they had to try and manufacture a way to argue that, in fact, this genetic change itself was the cause. And so in 2012, uh, we presented some early work on not only the ethics of genetic testing, uh, but also the potential for using them in litigation. Then in 2014, uh, we presented a, a different paper uh, on uh, a particular case that began in 2012 uh, in which, uh, again, they argued that the exposure to asbestos was irrelevant because the patient's own genes caused her to have the mesothelioma. This was the defense uh, up to and into the beginning of the actual trial uh, when the defense decided that they would withdraw the witness who they had prepared to testify about this uh, and the case settled uh, before the, the jury got to decide it. Uh, we thought that this was perhaps the end uh, until uh, earlier this year in another case uh, which brings me to this year's paper uh, that is being presented. Uh, this is a smaller version of the actual this is a, a smaller version of the actual poster, which is going to be about four feet, feet high and uh, three feet wide. Um, and uh, in our particular case, uh, the defense tried to assert the same defense, bringing in a, a doctor who uh, said he was an expert, although he didn't really have the appropriate training or qualifications. Uh, to try and tell the jury that uh, this genetic uh, change could alone be the cause. And for that reason, the defense wanted to force the patient to undergo genetic testing to determine if, in fact, she had this particular abnormality. Uh, we objected because of invasion of privacy reasons uh, and also because it was not relevant. Uh, we presented the testimony of a world authority on this genetic abnormality who explained to the judge uh, that uh, as the literature said and as just about every authority agrees, this abnormality can cause an increased susceptibility, an increased um, risk of reacting to the asbestos exposure, which would make it easier for the disease to develop but it alone could not be an actual separate cause without the asbestos exposure. The judge considered all of the medical evidence and ruled in our favor and told the defense that they could not have this testing performed. Uh, the case then resolved and uh, settled. So we now had a court opinion explaining why the defense theory was no good. We hope that this will finally put this issue to rest 
If it doesn't, we'll be back in two years uh, with another paper explaining uh, what else has happened in the interim. Thank you.